Today we are making some a yummy Sunday dinner. Nice things, nice things, nice things. One good girl, yeah, do the right thing. One with yourself, I like your style win. Nice things, nice things, nice things. So you know, so when you make curry goat, it has a well marinated, well seasoned up and thing. So I had this in the freezer for two days, then I took it out last night for it to kind of defrost a bit. It's quite defrosted, so now I have my curry burning and I'm about to add it to my pot and get this whole process started. So all the seasonings and stuff that I used, I'm gonna leave down below in the description box for you guys to check out. I also have a curry goat video already on my channel. I'm gonna also link that down below. So as you guys can see, all that heat that's coming off, my curry is already burned and I'm about to add the meat to the pot. So I'm just gonna pour in everything. Just separating everything now. So right now I'm just making sure that all the gold is good in the pot, you know, set good, like ice in my freezer and all them things there. But yeah, I'm just making sure that there's nothing stuck together because I'm about to just let it do its thing and start producing some water. So what we're gonna do is just cover it and come and check on it in about 20 minutes. So I want you guys to see this lovely, rich packet of curry that I use. I love this so, so much. This is literally my favorite curry brand to use. Besides, I also use Grace Curry Powder, the hot one sometimes, but this is Bay, my go-to curry powder for every curry dish. So everything's been cooking for about 25 minutes. And now I'm just coming to ensure that nothing's sticking. Everything's cooking well, and it is. It smells so good already. So all the meat and stuff that was on top, basically just mixing everything all together so that they could get done nicely all throughout. So what I'm about to do is just boil some water to add it so everything could really start simmering and cooking well. I'm gonna leave it for a longer period of time and I don't want the water to start drying out. So now I'm just adding in my water. It's gonna stir everything around because right now I'm gonna allow it to fully start cooking and getting tender. So everything's been going for about an hour now. Usually when I make curry goat, I like to allow it to cook for about two and a half hours to three hours, depending on what kind of goat I get. If it's good and tender after two and a half hours, perfect. If not, I usually just allow it to simmer for another 30 minutes until tender. One thing about curry goat is you want to make sure that it is tender. Curry goat and oxtail are two things that I don't really like eating from just about anybody because not everybody knows how to cook it well. So right now we're just going to cover our pot and let it simmer. I'm going to leave it for about 45 minutes and then I'm going to come and check on it. Okay guys, so it's another 45 minutes into this cooking process. And the goat is looking and smelling so good. The water is dried down quite a bit. So what we're gonna do for our last leg of cooking is just add a little bit more water so that everything could tenderize and cook through well. I could already see that it's starting to tender up. Like from just feeling through it, I could see that it's gonna cook really nicely okay guys now we're adding our water in doing the same thing that we did before just making sure that everything is submerged so that the gold could cook thoroughly I'm gonna leave this cooking for another 30 minutes 
then I'm gonna come and check on it and see how tender it is and then I'm gonna prep my potatoes and thicken up my gravy a little bit okay guys so everything is coming along great the gravy looks really good it's kind of a little bit dried down so what I'm gonna do is just tip in a little bit more water just so the potatoes and stuff that I'm about to add in could cook and then we're gonna have ourselves some nice tender juicy spicy and delicious curry goat tip in a little bit of water So guys, I have two medium potatoes right here that I just cubed, diced, chopped, whatever you want to call it. They're just in this size and now I'm about to add them to the pot. Combine this all throughout so they can cook. I'm about to add my final little touch in here if you could just comment down below and let me know if you guys think you know what it is that I'm about to add before I add it comment now let me know if you know what this last touch is if you guessed the ketchup then you are absolutely correct I love to put ketchup in my curry goat and my curry chicken I do this you don't have to follow suit if you don't want to but this just adds a nice taste to it to me and I love it and I've been doing it so I'm gonna do it so you don't need a lot of ketchup I'm literally just gonna add a little bit right there a little bit on this side and a little bit right here in the middle literally just three little squirts pause all throughout and I'm about to just combine it into the gravy like i said this is what i do i'm showing you guys my recipe if you want to follow and add the ketchup in you could do that if not you could just let your gravy simmer as is but i like the ketchup so So the stove has been on medium heat throughout this whole cooking process. So now we're gonna just lower the heat just a little bit to allow the potatoes to cook thoroughly and for the gravy to kind of simmer down a little bit and just thicken up. So we're gonna cover this and come back in 20 minutes. So guys, while the goat is simmering down on the last leg, I'm about to just make my rice and I'm also making some macaroni salad so this is the macaroni that i have in this right here going all the ingredients and measurements and everything is going to be down below but for the sake of not having this video super drawn out i'm just going through really quickly so my macaroni is getting cooked in some salted water right here i have my rice i'm about to add in one tablespoon of butter and i'm going to also add in a little bit of salt just gonna mix through this so basically I have four cups of rice with three cups of water, one tablespoon of butter, and just a little bit of salt for taste. So I just covered the rice and I'm going to allow it to just start steaming. I'm going to come back and check on it in about 15 minutes just to ensure that it's cooking and it's not like drying down too fast. The stove right now is on medium heat so it should be fine. For the macaroni, I'm going to allow it to cook for 10 minutes because I like my macaroni. Whenever I make any kind of pasta, macaroni included, I want it to be al dente. I do not want it to be too soft so 10 minutes should be good for this. So we're gonna give this 15 minutes and give this 10 minutes. And you wanna make sure that for this, the cover is a little bit off to the side like this. It's still gonna be boiling, but you just don't want it to boil over into the stove. So kinda just rest it to the side. So the goat should be ready up by now. Let's see what it's dealing with. So the gravy definitely looks good as hell. Gonna check and see if the potatoes are cooked through. See how the goat is tasting. See if we need more time or not. 
but everything looks so delicious okay so i'm gonna take a fork and just taste a piece it looks like we have a winner here so i'm gonna taste this first definitely tender mmm wow okay so now i'm about to taste a piece of the potato to ensure that it's cooked and it's not hard so what we're going to do at this point is go ahead and turn the stove off because our curry goat is complete so i'm just giving you guys an overview of just how good this goat looks like look at the gravy so rich the rice has been steaming for 15 minutes now and I'm about to just fluff it to see how it's coming along and it's coming along great so now I'm gonna just cover it and allow it to just dry down for another 10 minutes and then the rice is gonna be complete so guys the rice is all done i basically just turned the stove off moved it from the back burner to the front to kind of show you guys what it looks like i'm just fluffing it with this fork it came out nice fluffy and shelly just how i like it i'm just gonna go ahead and make the macaroni salad real quick so right here i have the macaroni i basically just drained all the water off and then just added to this and allow it to just cool for about five minutes here we have a quick basic overview of all the ingredients that I'm going to use today. Everything is going to be down in the description box below for you guys to follow along if you want to make this. So guys, here we have the finished macaroni salad. I'm about to just add it to the refrigerator to kind of chill and get a little bit cool because that's how I like my macaroni salad. It has to be really cold or at least not hot or warm. So I'm going to add this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. So last but not least, we are making some sweet plantains to go on the side. What you want to do when you fry your plantain is to just monitor it. Make sure that you are not leaving it for too long. Turn it as many times as you need. Fry it how you like it and that's it. So guys, here is the finished meal. I'm about to eat because I'm starving. I literally did not eat all day because I was prepping for this meal. So I'm about to go enjoy it. If you guys enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed as yet, make sure you do that. Comment down below and let me know how you guys like this recipe. As always, thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in my next video.